Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I'm Hasham Ali Khan. So now I'm continuing the theory on deductions from GTI. Last video I have explained you what are the deductions from GTI. What are the different deductions from ATC to ATU. The main deduction we have started under section ATC, qualified savings. So I explained you uh, when the deduction of under section ATC will be given in the last video. So if you have not watched uh, that video I uh, request you I suggest you to go to the playlist of my channel select the subject advanced aspect of income tax watch the video on deductions from GTI then you come to this video it's a continuation of the last video in this video I'm going to explain you about how to find out the qualifying amount under section ATC deductions under section ATC how to find out the qualifying amount of each of the savings and apart from that what is provident fund what are the different types of provident fund and what is the tax treatment regarding provident fund that I am going to explain you so watch till the end to get the complete command all these points are going to come in the problems after completing this theory so if you want a good command on the problem be thorough on the theory videos so take a screenshot of the notes which I have written on the board then I'll explain all the points regarding this qualified savings under section ATC and also provident fund. Come on viewers, first of all I'm explaining computation of deductions <clears throat> under section ATC. This is for qualified savings. Calculating qualified amount for each type of savings. Income Tax Act has given list of savings. If an investor make those savings in different forms, then deduction will be allowed. But there is a limit on every type of savings. So here I'm going to explain you what is the limit for each type of saving. First one, provident fund. Normally, the first item that will qualify for deduction under section ADC is uh, provident fund. I'll explain you in this video only what is provident fund, why it is applied, what are the concepts. But right now, remember, provident fund, amount contributed by the SSC in provident fund will qualify. So, only employees contribution qualify. In provident fund, employee will contribute as well as employer will also contribute. But here only employees contribution qualifies for deduction under section ADC. Now for four types of provident funds are there. SPF, RPF, URPF and PPF. SPF stands for statutory provident fund. In statutory provident fund actual amount to contribute. If an SSC contributes to SPF statutory provident fund fully qualifies for deduction under section ADC. RPF recognized provident fund if an SSC contributes to RPF fully qualifies for deduction under section ADC. URPF unrecognized provident fund if the SSC contributes to URPF it will not qualify for deduction under section ADC. Then PPF Public provident fund in PPF actual amount or 1,50,000 whichever is least will qualify. There's a limit actual amount contributed to, contributed to PPF or 1,50,000 whichever is least will qualify. Then contribution to PPF in the name of spouse or children will also qualify. When a person contributes to PPF, he should not deposit only on himself. Even if he deposits in the, name, in the name of spouse or children, that will also qualify for deduction. So these are the rules you have to remember. Contribution to SPF qualifies. Contribution to RPF qualifies. Contribution to URPF does not qualify. Contribution to PPF qualifies, but there is a limit up to 1,50,000. That's it. Second one is life insurance premium. If an SSC pays life insurance premium, on his policy or spouse policy or children policy the insurance premium paid will be allowed as deduction but the rules are 
premium paid on own, own policy or spouse or on children that will qualify qualified amount is least of the following two amounts now three circumstances are given if the policy is taken before 31st March 2012 if the life insurance policy was taken before 31st March 2012 then least of the following two will qualify actual premium paid or 10% of the policy amount whichever is least will qualify if the policy is taken before 31st March if the policy is taken after 1st April 2012 2013 then for normal person for, sorry we'll take for, if the policy is taken after 1 for 2012 actual amount or 10 percent actually earlier it was 20 percent sorry again i repeat if policy is taken before 31st march 2012 actual amount paid or 20 percent of the policy amount whichever is least will qualify for deduction if the policy is taken before 31st march if the policy is taken after 31st March, that means from 1st April 2012, the percentage has been reduced from 20% to 10%. Actual premium paid or 10% of policy amount, whichever is less. Now, on or after 1 for 2013, if the policy is taken on or after 1st April 2013, for normal person, actual amount paid or 10% of policy amount. For disabled person, actual amount paid or 15% of policy amount. If nothing is given in the problem, we assume that the policy is taken after 1 for 2013. So normal uh, person, actual amount paid or 10% of the policy amount that you have to remember. This is regarding <coughs> life insurance premium. Then next one is ULIP, ULIP linked insurance policy. Actual amount paid fully qualifies. Contribution to post office term deposit 10 year or 15 year post office CTD. Cumulative time deposit fully qualifies. Notified central government security like NSC. National security certificate. Uh, invested in the name of spouse and children fully qualifies. Then subscription to housing loan scheme fully qualifies. Contribution to Dhanaraksha, Jeevan Dhara, Jeevan Akshay of LIC or other insurance policy companies fully qualifies. Contribution to superannuation fund fully qualifies. Investment in units of unit equity linked scheme of LIC, UTI and other mutual funds fully qualifies. Deposit in national savings scheme 1992 fully qualifies. Tuition fees paid for children. Expenditure incurred on tuition fees by the SSC on their children. That will also qualify for deduction under section 80C. So these uh, provisions you have to remember when we give the deduction under section 80C. Now I am going to explain you about Provident Fund. The Provident Fund is a scheme, social security scheme implemented by the government on the employees. That means during the service period, the employees has to deposit some amount in the Provident Fund scheme. Every month as the employee earns the money, at the time of earning itself, some percentage of their salary has to be deposited with Provident Fund Scheme. It is regulated, controlled by the government. So that after retirement, they can be able to get the monetary benefits. From that monetary benefits, they don't find any financial problems after retirement. So it, to promote social security of employees through savings, the government has framed Provident Fund Scheme. If the government only tells the employees to save, the employees may not save. When the government compulsorily put a scheme that from your salary a certain percentage should be saved in Provident Fund scheme, compulsory employee have to save. And this amount they will get back at the time of retirement. The salient features of the scheme are, what are the features? First one, employee contributes a fixed percentage of salary. Every month at the time of getting the salary, a certain percentage of salary will be deducted and that amount is deposited in the PF scheme. Employer also contributes. Employer will also contribute the same percentage or higher percentage or lower percentage. For example, 10%. Employee contributes 10% of salary. Employer may also contribute either 10% or less than 10 or more than 10%. But compulsorily, employer also has to contribute. Then 
when the employee retires, he will be paid back his contribution, employer's contribution along with interest on the board. That means at the time of retirement, the employee will get back his money, his own contribution, employer's contribution along with interest on both he will get. Next one is, these are the salient features. Now employer's contribution is an income. The employer is contributing into the account of employee. That means from employee point of view it's an income. Because in his account employer is contributing. It's an income. So unexempted amount is taxable. We will see how much is unexempted. That amount is taxable. Then employee's contribution it is a saving. When employee contributes it is a saving. So if it is qualified saving he will get deduction under section 80c but every i mean uh, employee's contribution will not qualify we have to see what type of provident fund scheme is then interest created in pf interest credited in provident fund that is an income to the ssc so if it is exempt unexempted amount is taxable exempted it is not taxable then kinds of provident fund so these three points very important Employer's contribution is an income. Unexempted amount is taxable. And uh, employee, employee's contribution is a saving. If it is qualified saving, he will get deduction. Interest credited. Interest credited is an income. Unexempted amount will be taxable. Now kinds of provident fund. Three types of provident fund are there. SPF, RPF, URPF, PPF. SPF stands for statutory provident fund. This statutory provident fund will be maintained by government departments, government employees, state government, central government employees, educational institutions, universities, etc. So this type of organization, they will maintain statutory provident fund and recognized provident fund. A provident fund which is recognized by the commissioner of income tax that is called RPF. This RPF will be maintained by private sector and public sector organizations. Then unrecognized provident fund, a provident fund which is not at all recognized by the commissioner of income tax that is called URPF and this URPF will be maintained only by private organizations. Now last one is public provident fund, a provident fund which is open to all, any type of employee or non-employee, business people, professional people, anybody can open the account in public provident fund. This public provident fund scheme will be maintained by State Bank of India and other nationalized banks and post offices. So they will maintain the scheme of PPF. Anybody can come and open the account of PPF and deposit the amount. They will get the deduction. So these are the four types. SPF, RPF, URPF, PPF. Statutory provident fund, recognized, unrecognized and public provident fund. Now what are the rules? Statutory provident fund, employer contributes fully exempted, employer's contribution. If SSC is having SPF, so whatever employer contributes into SPF, that is completely exempted in the hands of employee. Mr. X is an uh, employee of central government department. Central government department is an employee. He is having SPF. So whatever uh, employer contributes in his SPF account, that's an income, but it is completely exempted. Employee's contribution fully qualifies for deduction under Section 80C for SPF. Statutory provident fund, employer's contribution fully exempted. Employee's contribution fully qualifies for deduction under Section 80C. And interest credited in SPF is fully exempted from tax. So these three points are very important you have to remember. Employer contribution, employee contribution and interest. RPF, recognized provident fund. Employer's contribution up to 12% of salary is exempted. When employer contributes up to 12% of salary, if he contributes, it is exempted income in the hands of SSC. If the employer contributes more than 12% of salary, the excess amount is taxable in the hands of the SSC. Then employee's contribution. Employee's contribution to RPF fully qualifies for deduction under section 80C. Interest credited. Interest credited in RPF. 
if the rate of interest is up to 9.5%, it is exempted. Over 9.5% interest credited, the excess will be taxable. This is in case of RPF. Now URPF, unrecognized provident fund. Employer's contribution to be ignored. If the employer is maintaining URPF, then employer whatever contributes to URPF, that should not be considered now. Ignored now. Ignoring does not mean it is tax free. It is taxable at the time of ref uh, refunding, at the time of getting back the amount on retirement. At the time of retirement when the SSC gets back from URPF, at that time it is taxable. Then employee's contribution does not qualify for uh, deduction under section 80C. URPF. Employee contribution to URPF does not qualify. Interest credited should be ignored. Ignoring does not mean it is tax free. It will be taxable at the time of getting back the money on retirement. Last one PPF, Public Provident Fund. Employer's contribution. Normally, employer will not contribute into PPF of the employee. If the employer contributes to PPF, then it will become a taxable perquisite in the hands of the employee. Now, employee's contribution, amount contributed fully qualifies for deduction, maximum qualifying amount 1,50,000. When the employee contributes to PPF, fully qualifies for deduction under Section 80C, but limit is up to 1,50,000. Interest credited is fully tax-free income in PPF. So these points are very important because in the problems, you have to apply all these provisions what I have explained in this. So I have explained you what is provident fund, what are the different types of provident fund and treatment of provident fund.